Where do we find the money for the 0% fee increase that the ANC says you in government should institute? Look, it's a tough one. It, it, uh, we, we have an economy that's not growing uh, at substantially higher than 0%. We therefore will have an impact on tax revenue as a result as well. Uh, and we're already fiscally constrained uh, by the fact that we're going through a period of what we call fiscal consolidation, which means for those of us that might not be following this, that we've got to reduce our deficit, which we increased immediately after the 2008-9 uh, recession, and uh, get our debt under control as, as, as well. So it's in that overall context where your envelope is fairly limited on the one hand. And uh, since 2010, we've been uh, what we call giving people haircuts in departments. Uh, so pretty much you, like you and I, <laughs> there's very little hair left. Um, and and we, we, we then have to go to each of the departments and entities in government and basically say, let's look at how you can become a lot more efficient at uh, spending money, but also let's see what we could delay, postpone, or cut uh, in, in the process. And that's, that's the work that's going on now, uh, to find uh, that kind of cash. So is that the aim, to make sure that we, don't, we have a 0% fee increase for 2017? No, that announcement the Minister of Higher Education will make in a short while. There's a debate in Parliament this afternoon as well on, on the question of fees. So whatever, whatever is the final decision of government, our, our job is to find the money. So you will find the money? We'll find the money, depending on how much it is. <laughs> Are the current, um, at, at the opening, you know, a lot of people talk about you being under pressure and so forth. Can, can I ask you, is your job today about politics or about economics? Is it about, where is the division between what you do? You talk about fiscal consolidation and so forth, but a lot of what you said in Parliament yesterday was about confidence and the politics of the country. And it's about the political economy. <laughs> the two come together. So, no, you, you, uh, throughout the world, you, you can't separate uh, politics and economics, mm -hmm. because economics and economic policy making is about politics. It's about what each country would allow, what its citizens will allow uh, or accept. Uh, um, every political uh, leader would like to see economy is growing at four, five, six percent. Uh, every political leader would like to be able to reform their economies, restructure their economies, take tough decisions about uh, one or other sector of the economy uh, or the labor market or the product market or whatever the case might be. So why, why doesn't it happen? It doesn't happen because there are real political constraints. There's always winners and losers uh, in change processes. And if the, if the losers are powerful enough, or potential losers, uh, generally their resistance uh, disables one from taking the decisions that one needs to take. We're fairly young as a democracy. I think we have a little bit more space. But uh, even in our own country, uh, vested interests are beginning to develop. And those vested interests determine whether uh, you have the space to bring about changes or not. So let's take. One concrete example, the OECD, the IMF, and others uh, describe our economy as one that, is, uh, that has a highly concentrated what they call product market. Uh, and essentially what that means is that there's limited uh, competition. There's uh, oligopolies operating in many important sectors, including monopolies in sectors like energy as well. And uh, one of the things that they ask of us as government and as a society is to open up the product market, uh, create more competition, uh, encourage the growth of more small and medium-sized businesses, because the past didn't allow us to do that. 